Hey Maths Nerds, welcome back to the channel. We're starting off with a flashback HSC question from 2013. Which of these four is a solution of the equation five to the power of X is equal to four? Hit pause and see which one would be your pick for the answer. Okay, what I'm noticing about all four of our options is they are all involving um, logarithm with a base of E. Okay, that tells me that my first step in solving this equation to get X as the subject is I can take a logarithm of, of both sides and instead of taking a logarithm of base five, what we can instead do is take a logarithm of base E because that's what all our answers are indicating. Okay, so first step is take the equation and take log base E of both sides. Okay, now hopefully you remember that when we have a logarithm um, with a term involving a power, that power bit, the index, can be brought down the front to multiply the logarithm instead. So the left-hand side of the equation can be written as X times log base E of five. Okay, that's called the blogger property from um, a previous video. Okay, now to finish off, just divide both sides by log base E of five, and you've got your X by itself, and we have log base E of four divided by log base E of five, which is option C. Well done if you said the same thing. Okay, today's next lesson in the discrete probability functions topic is called expected value. Okay, which is another way of thinking about the mean of the outcomes of a discrete probability function. So let's have a look. Starting off with a question, if you rolled a standard six-sided die 1,000 times and then you found the mathematical average, which is the mean of all 1,000 outcomes, what number should we expect to get? Okay, so we're expecting to roll a one, two, three, four, five, and six, an even number of times, or an equal number of times, I should say. If we found the average of one, two, three, four, five, and six, the answer we would get is 3.5. Okay, so the average or the mathematical mean of the outcomes in this topic, we can also refer to this as the expected value. The notation we're gonna be using is E of X, so expectation of the variable X, where in this case, X was the outcome of a dice roll. And it's also, as I said, it can be referred to as the mean of the outcomes, okay? So the terms mean and expected value can be used interchangeably in this course. Okay, let's do an example of how you calculate uh, the mean or the expected value from a probability function. So here we have P of X, um, we have the outcomes are our probabilities and on the right we have our inputs. All right, so first thing we should do is turn this into a discrete probability function table, which is gonna make things a bit easier for us. So we're gonna have our table from the last video. Across the top, we have our outcomes, which are one, two, and four. Across the bottom, we're gonna calculate our probabilities. Now, when x is equal to one, the function says we need to do x divided by two, which in this case will be one divided by two, which is a half. When x is equal to two, our probability function says we need to do x divided by eight. So two out of eight is equal to a quarter. And for the input of four, the output is four take away three divided by four, which gets us an answer of one quarter. So here are our three outcomes with their three probabilities. Now the formula we're gonna be using today and in next video as well to find the expected value looks like this. So expectation of X is equal to, uh, this is a Greek letter called sigma. It um, signifies to do the sum. So this basically says, take the sum of all your X values, which are your outcomes, multiplied by their probabilities. Okay, so all you need to do to find the expected outcome or the expected value is take your three outcomes, multiply them by their probabilities and then add the result. So that'll look like this, okay? We're doing one multiplied by a half, two multiplied by a quarter, and then four multiplied by a quarter. We're gonna add those three numbers together and we get an answer of two. Okay, so the average outcome or the mean outcome of this discrete probability function is equal to two. Okay, let's have another go uh, using this formula to get some more practice. So here we have a discrete probability function in the table below. We have our outcomes across the top and for our probabilities, they are all left in terms of B. Okay, part A is to find the value of B, similar to what we were doing in the last video. Okay, so to find B, we're gonna use the fact that we know that the um, sum of the outcomes of a discrete probability function is always equal to one. So we can form an equation by doing B plus B plus B uh, plus three over five minus B plus three B over five is equal to one. 
Okay, now I'm going to make this equation a bit simpler by getting rid of the fractions by multiplying each term by 5. So we have 5b, 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 3 minus 5b, plus 3b, and don't forget the other side, also multiplied by 5. Okay, if we simplify the left-hand side, we end up with 13b plus 3 is equal to 5. Take away 3 from both sides, and now we divide by 13, and we get the value of b is equal to 2 out of 13. Now we know what the value of b is, we can calculate our five probabilities to then find our expected outcome or expected value in the next part of the question. So I'm going to take my table and wherever I see a b, I'm going to replace it with a 2 out of 13, leaving us with these probabilities. Okay, now our expected value. Once again, all our outcomes are going to be multiplied by their probabilities and then we're going to add the results. So here's our calculation, negative 1 times 2 out of 13, 0 times 2 out of 13, 1 times 2 out of 13, 2 times 29 out of 65, and 3 times 6 out of 13. We're going to add all those together. You don't need to use the brackets, but I just think it makes my working out look a bit clearer for me. Uh, putting this through a calculator, we'll get an expected uh, value of approximately 2.277. Okay, so the mean of the outcomes for this probability uh, function is about 2.277. Okay, on to the next one. We're looking at an application of expected value. So you can use the expected value to um, give you a bit of an understanding of whether games are rigged for or against you. Here's an example using roulette. So a roulette wheel has 18 black numbers and it has 18 red numbers and there is one green zero. Okay, so 18 plus 18 plus one is gonna be 37. So we have 37 possible outcomes. You place a $20 bet on black. This means if the ball is spun and it lands on a black, you're gonna win 20 bucks. However, if it lands on red or green, you are going to lose your $20. Now we are going to uh, turn this situation into a discrete probability function using a table. Then we're gonna find the expected value, which in this instance is gonna be called the financial expectation. Okay, so setting up our function, across the top are our outcomes, which is gonna be either we win $20, so we gain 20 bucks, or we're going to lose $20. Now, if you are betting on black, like we said, there are 37 outcomes and the black numbers are 18 of them. So we have a probability of 18 out of 37. Now the red and the green tiles make up 19. So the probability of losing is 19 out of 37. Hence why this game is rigged because your chances of losing are slightly higher than your chances of winning. Now we'll find our expected value by doing 20 times 18 out of 37 and negative 20 times 19 out of 37. Okay, so multiplying our outcomes with our probabilities. Summing these two together with the calculator gives us a result of about negative $0.54. What this means is that uh, with roulette, sometimes you'll win, but slightly more times you'll lose. On average, each time you are playing with $20, you are gonna be losing about half a dollar per game. Okay, that means if you play 10 games, you're probably gonna lose about five bucks on average, okay? Individual results may vary. Okay, now for the challenge question to finish off, we have a, again, a discrete probability function. Uh, we have the values of P and Q are unknown, but we have the probabilities for three and four. Now we know that the expected value is equal to three, find the values of P and Q. If this video is making sense so far and you like a challenge, by all means, hit pause and see if you can uh, make some progress with this one. Okay, for this question, we need to form a pair of simultaneous equations that are going to allow us to solve for P and Q. So first of all, we can use, uh, like from the last video, we know that P plus Q plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.4 must be equal to one because they are the probabilities, it's the entire sample space of a probability function. Okay, so the outcomes must sum to one. This gets us that P plus Q plus 0.6 is one. So P plus Q must be equal to 0 0.4. There's our first equation. We're going to form another one and then we can do some simultaneous equations. Okay, question also tells us that the expected value is equal to three. So if we perform our calculation by taking our four outcomes, multiplying them by our four probabilities, adding them together, we can set that equal to three as our expected value. So we have one times P plus two times Q plus three times 0.2 plus four times 0.4 is equal to three. Okay, simplifying the left-hand side, we get P plus 2Q plus 0.6 plus 1.6 is equal to 3. 
That gets us that P plus 2Q must be equal to 0 0.8, and there is our second equation. Now, equation 1 and equation 2, we're going to solve simultaneously. I'm going to do equation 2, take away equation 1, so that these two P's cancel out, and then 2Q minus Q is equal to 1Q. So it works out very nicely. On the right-hand side, we have 0 0.8, take away 0 0.4 is equal to 0 0.4. So there's our value of Q, Q is equal to 0 0.4. If we substitute that into our two equations or either of them, we're gonna end up with P being equal to zero. Okay, so we have P plus 0 0.4 is equal to 0 0.4. So P must be nothing. So the probability of one is zero. All right, sweet, there's our values of P and Q and there's our challenge question done and dusted. That'll do it for today's video. Thanks so much if you watch this and I'll catch you later, bye.